Well, on first reading, this question seems really straightforward. And it is quite straightforward, but actually there's enough going on to make it quite a large job of handling all the data involved. There's a nice little derivation in there and some really important diagrams. You must know how to do your ray diagrams. It's a really good question on optics. Okay, tricky but interesting one. Let's, uh, let's do it. So um, the first one is going to be about a optical fiber and it's going to be talking about total internal reflection. Let's have a little read of this. So you've got two um, materials with different refractive indexes and it's such that it's likely to carry on doing total internal reflection all the way down the um, fibre. Okay, so the light rays entered the core with an angle of incidence theta and the angle of refraction is 20 degrees. So whatever's happening, it's coming in here and it's moving away at 20 degrees to this line here. Okay, now the first thing to realize we're talking about show the light ray will be totally internally reflected when it meets the boundary between the core and the cladding. So we're not at all really talking about this bit here. It's just kind of there to get you started. So we're talking about this moment here is gonna be the boundary between the core and the cladding. And we want to, we're want to. we interested in whether it's going to be totally internally reflected. So I'm going to construct my normal because the first thing you need to, to be aware of is this is the angle we're interested in, which is 20, 90 minus 20, which is 70 degrees. Okay, so that is our angle of incidence, 70 degrees. Okay, now I've got a core, I've got a cladding, and I want to work out the the critical angle essentially. If I'm going to show that it's going to be totally internally reflected, well I need to show this is greater than the critical angle. So I need to work that out. What is the critical angle going to be? Well I hope you remember probably doing um, a little experiment with D block. I hope you've done this one at least. And you shine it at the back of that and you notice it gets refracted, gets refracted, gets refracted until such a point as this angle here is equal to the critical angle. And at the critical angle, the angle of refraction is 90 degrees. Okay, so we can apply our Snell's law, which is looking at the formula sheet. Okay, N1 sine theta 1. Equals N2 sine theta 2. Okay, so have that ready. You can probably remember that, to be honest, but um, that's Snell's law. Now I'm simply going to plug in the numbers that I know. And what I'm saying is this situation here, theta 2, total internal reflection, is when theta 2 is at 90 degrees. Okay, and I'm going to work out that angle there, which is going to be the critical angle. So, plug in the numbers I know. N of the core, 1.56 sine of C, I don't know that yet, it's not that yet, um, equals N to 1.44 sine of 90. Okay? Then I'm just going to simplify, rearrange, and do the inverse of sine. And the first thing I'll do before I do anything is check that my calculator is in DEGS, because I've been working in DEGS so far. And whenever I'm doing any sine function, that's the first thing I'm going to do. So 1.44 sine of 90 is 1.44. Obviously, sine of 90 is 1. I think I could have managed that one. Um, and then that is 1.56 sine C. So sine C is 1.44 over 1.56. And I just need to do the inverse of that. So sine to the minus 1, 1.44 over 1.56 gives me 
Okay, so that's the critical angle, and the last bit is just to restate this point here. It's internally reflected because 70 degrees is greater than the critical angle. Okay, therefore, totally internally reflected. Okay, that's my starter for this question 14. That's the Simplest, simpler thing. I guess you can just remember, um, probably from your GCSE, that the critical angle is, um, or rather the refractive index, is 1 over sine c. That's the, certainly the thing that I remember from my GCSE, but you can use the formula sheet, if, as long as you remember, the critical angle is the situation where the refracted angle is 90. One asks you to draw a ray diagram. So let's have a little look. Magnifying bug boxes are used to observe small insects. One type consists of a clear plastic pot with a snap-on lid. So it's a magnifying glass, essentially. It, the lid acts as a converging lens of focal length 8.5. An insect inside the box appears to be 3.5 times bigger. So that's the magnification. And that's the focal length when viewed through the lid. Draw a ray diagram to show the formation of the image by the lens when it's used in this way. Okay, I'll just get my uh, ruler. Okay, so I think to get this right, you've got to recognize that it's been used as a magnifying glass. Okay, a converging lens is a magnifying glass, very particular set of things. It's not said to scale, so I'm not gonna bother drawing it to scale, but um, I certainly could answer the next part by doing a scale drawing. Although I don't know whether they would allow that, because I think they want it with an equation. So, um, axis of lens, first part of the ray diagram, converging lens, this notation for a converging lens. Um, the inset inside the box appears to be 3.5 times bigger. So when you're using a converging lens as a magnifying glass, then it's when the object is within the focal length of that of that lens. So this is my object here. And all they're really looking out from for in this case is that you can construct yourself or you know where the rays are. And I only ever do two rays. Do one ray from the top of the object to the center of the lens and through the focal point on the corresponding side of the lens. If it's a di diverging lens rather than converging, it would go the opposite and I'd use this focal point here. Right, and then from the top of the object through the very center of the lens there. These rays don't meet, but we always talk about the image being formed where rays do meet. So I'm going to construct them backwards. We've already done something about this on the paper. And then hopefully we can see that those rays do cross, but they cross in here. I should do that dotted, shouldn't I? The image is there. Now I probably um, haven't done that as well as I could have done because I was hoping for them to cross up back up here somewhere. But it still, it does actually do the job because what they're looking for is that you've done at least two rays that are correct and that you made the object where you've projected those rays backwards on the same side of the lens as the object. Okay, you made the image, sorry, on the same side of the lens as the object is the third mark. Okay, that's that bit there, right. Now, it asks you to calculate the distance of the insect from the lid. Um, this is a bit of a nuisance, um, this question here, so bear with. Okay, if you're talking about distances from lenses, you're gonna use the thin lens equation, is this one here, and you know the focal length. You're told the focal length is 8.5 centimeters. Okay, I also know one more thing. I know the magnification is 3.5 times bigger. Okay, and I know the equation magnification. It's not just image over object height. 
it is the ratio of um, distance from lens to image and object to lens, okay, which is you. And that's all these two. Object to lens, lens to image. Now, because, this is the last bit of stuff you need to know, because the image is on this side, we say that the magnification is negative. Okay, or you could say that the U, the distance from the, the lens, is negative. Because if we say magnification negative, perhaps we'll be um, expecting a diminishing or expecting an inverted image. But because this distance here, sorry, the V, is not the side we'd expect, we'll just say that V is negative. Okay? So, we're going to need to put that in when we do this algebra now. So, let's input the stuff that we know on the next line. We know that F is 1 point, sorry, 8.5. And I can stick with centimetres because it hasn't told me to give my answer in metres. I'm just going to get an answer out in centimetres. And I can rearrange this to know something else about one of these two. I want to calculate the distance from the insect to the lid, which is u. So I'm going to rearrange this for v equals. v equals m u. Okay? And u is negative, or m is negative, whichever way, as long as I get that right. So v is minus 3.5 u. I've got to get that negative in there because being used as a magnifying glass so the image is the same size as the object. So now I can input that into my expression here. So I get 1 over u plus 1 over minus 3.5 u equals this. And now I've got a situation with only one unknown. Here's where you know you have to rely on some really top numeracy skills because you've got to add these together. How do we add fractions where the denominators are different? Let's just think about that. See, if you've got to this point, you can feel pretty good about yourself because you've got two marks already because you've recognized, manipulated, and used this equation here. And you've used your fin lens equation because you've shown that you've plugged in these numbers and plugged in your rearranged thing here. So this next little bit uh, is, it's not hard, but it, it's a bit long. Um, uh, but it's a skill I think with this equation you're going to need to show. So you've got one unknown, but you can't just simply add these fractions yet. So what do you need to do when you add fractions with different denominators where you cross multiply? So you multiply all this side by minus 3.5 u. And you multiply all this side by u. Okay, and now you've got something that you can add because the denominators are the same. And we have a little bit of cancellation as well. And uh, tidying up, which I'll just do. You get this expression here. Okay, so now I can just take the reciprocals, so 8.5 is 3.5u over 2.5, multiply this by 2.5, so 21.25 is 3.5u, so u is that divided by 3.5 gives me 6.07 centimetres. Okay, I didn't need to work in metres because I'm just doing those ratios there. So that's my final answer. Tricky one that, you know, you're going to need to be able to do this quickly and accurately. Although well, there's a lot of steps there, you can probably go a little bit faster than that with practice. Um, and recognize that you can use 
uh, another formula to eliminate one of your variables. Essentially, this is a, these two are simultaneous equations. Okay, it's just a more complex one than you're probably used to. All right, hope that helps. So I hope that all made sense. It seemed a little bit long, that uh, cross multiplication of the fin lens formula, but you can do that. And really, once you've done it a few times, you're going to, have to do that much quicker than I did and in fewer steps than I did. I would suggest learning it in both the form they've given you and the cross multiplied form. The product over sum is the focal length.